All right. Good evening, everybody. We are just getting everything online and going. So, Guy, how you doing, bud? Okay, Instagram's online. BC the Outdoor Life, welcome. Real Unlucky Six, welcome. Pack em out apparel, welcome, welcome. So, Kelly Ford, how you doing, brother? Larry Bennett here from John Day, Oregon. Jeffrey Duncan is joining us on Facebook. Uh, Washington Elk Attic from Instagram, Wild Rose Trail. So, welcome, everybody. So, Sean King, good evening. Rainbows 949. So, people are jumping in. So, um... We'll kind of give it a little bit here for everybody to kind of jump in a little bit, and then we'll get rolling. Rose, how are you doing? So tonight we're going to talk about uh, sodium and intake while hunting and the importance of it. So um, I think this one's going to be kind of interesting. I've, I've been doing, you know, quite a bit of research. Um, I, mean, I mean, I've looked into it a while ago, but... Uh, I've been doing a lot more research the last couple of days and, and have really really found some interesting uh, interesting information. So uh, Nicholas Curry from YouTube, good evening. Jay Tapadin from Facebook. Hello, hello. Jeffrey Duncan also joining from Facebook. Excited to see you in Wyoming this summer. Jeffrey, looking forward to it. Bugle me this from YouTube. Rose, super amazing. How are you? I am doing well. Thank you. So, Bendable Outdoors, good evening. So, uh, going to drive from Idaho Falls. So, super stoked. Perfect. So, um, yeah, Jeffrey, I'm not going to go that way. When I get to Pocatello, I normally loop around south. Uh, but from you in Idaho Falls, it makes sense just to go up through Palisades. So, all right, Lars, Instagram, Jim Hendrickson from Harrisburg, Oregon. Good evening, K. Grant McCowan, Dave West. It is going well, my friend. How are you? 503 Hunt Taws here. Charles Janovic, Tori Savage Outdoors. Uh, let's see, Wrangler Tim. So, Sean Keller, good evening. So, um, but yeah, so hopefully the information I have to share with you guys tonight um, will kind of uh, kind of give you some good information. So, uh, Rose, what T-shirt are you wearing? This is actually the uh, Team Hunt from Onyx. So, Bill Berry, what's up? David Geringer, still need to make it to Arizona. I know, but uh, Montana. Southwest Montana may be getting added to the seminar list. So you had to pick the Wyoming dates on my wedding anniversary. Hey, it's a good anniversary weekend. So, you know, come over and hang out. And I mean, there's things to do in Aetna and Alpine. And then you could always jet over to Jackson Hole and could make it a good weekend. So jojo mccarthy how you doing chilling in idaho falls at the la quinta what are you doing in idaho falls jojo so mike strong good evening so eca rip it on the way incident with native and paypal caused a delay chris good good it's on the way so uh nick stevens good evening yeah actually mark told me that a few orders from the eca have come in so if any of you guys have ordered the eca read from native by carlton uh, both Mark and I would love to hear your feedback. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think about it. So, uh, Mr. Jake, good evening. So, Bill Berry. Okay. So, let's go ahead and get going. So, Rose, I will be in Southern Oregon to see your seminar. Perfect. August 2nd at Southern Oregon Archery. We will see you there. So, all right, everybody, here we go. So, hi everybody, my name is Michael Batiste from the Elk Calling Academy, and this is Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. If this is your first time joining us, welcome, we're glad you're here. 
the way Wapiti Wednesday usually works is we start with a topic and tonight we're going to be talking about sodium intake while hunting and how important sodium actually is to your body. Um, just like always, it doesn't matter which platform, whether you're joining us from Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, feel free to put your questions in as we roll along and we will do our best to answer those. So just like always, there is some information that I can't share because we do have students and the Patreon members over at elkcallingacademy.com that kind of pay for um, kind of those private lessons and tutorials and calling tips and tricks. So, um, also, if this is your first time or you're enjoying the content that we're putting out, make sure that you hit that like or subscribe or follow button and be sure to turn notifications on so that way you're notified whenever we upload a new video or we go live. So, all right, here we go. Joe McCarthy, drink pickle juice. So, yes, pickle juice is a good way to combat. So, so really where all this stemmed from is the other night I posted a um, backpack meal that I had tried. And shortly after I posted that, I started to get a few messages from people asking if I was concerned about the 1500 milligrams of sodium that was in that meal. Which then led to some, you know, conversations. And it was really interesting to hear how low amounts of sodium that people are taking into their body. And so I really started doing a lot of research because I know that marathoners and triathletes and a lot of endurance athletes take salt tablets. And so it really got me thinking, okay, what's the deal? So now, first off, I am not a in the medical field, I'm not a doctor and I'm not going to tell you how much sodium you need to take because that really varies from person to person. But what I do want to do is share information with you that can help you calculate the amount of sodium you need. Now, in response to the, the 1500 milligrams of sodium that was in that one meal is you, you need to understand that throughout the day, you are sweating out sodium and you're also excreting sodium in your urine. So you have to replace that sodium. Um, because if you don't, one of the things that can happen is you can actually get um, hyponatremia, which is basically low blood sodium. And what happens is if your sodium gets too low, you can actually start having, you know, effects to where you can get groggy, sluggish, nauseous, and ultimately you could slip into a coma and people have actually died from this. So um, one of the things that, that happens is Basically, when when sodium, when there's there's not enough sodium in your body outside of your cells, your cells start absorbing water and that causes the swell or the cells to basically swell. And then that includes your brain cells also. So one of the things is, you know, especially for a lot of people that are out there and, and a couple of these individuals, you know, when I talk to them, you know, I was like, okay, well, you know, when you're out hunting during the day, you, you know, what are you drinking? Are you drinking any electrolytes or, or are you putting anything in? And they were like, no, we just drink straight water. Well, the only problem with that is, is so you're sweating, you're losing sodium in your sweat, you're using, losing sodium in your water or urine, and you're only drinking water back in. Well, you're actually diluting the sodium in your body even more which actually increases the opportunity for, you know, your cells to take on that water and swell. So, like I said, you, you need to basically kind of calculate how much sodium you need because everybody's a little bit different on how much they sweat and how much sodium they sweat. 
but on the average, and I mean, I, I researched quite a bit of this, uh, Harvard Medical, there was quite a few places, you know, like Harvard Medical that I was going to and in, in gathering information. And it was kind of interesting because um, in one quart of sweat is basically about a half a pound of body weight. But also in that one pound, or, or, or sorry, one quart of sweat, there's basically about a thousand milligrams of sodium that you're losing in that one quart. And kind of a, a good way that they were saying is when you're training, so if you want to kind of calculate when you're training, weigh yourself before you exercise and then weigh yourself after you exercise and then basically, you know, see how much weight that you've lost. And that one pound, basically, let me see if I can find it here. Hold on. Uh, but that one pound, you know, basically could equate to um, 16 ounces. So basically two pounds would be about one quart of sweat. So if, if, if you're losing two pounds, that's roughly about that thousand milligrams. Now, the average that they, that they recommend is, um, you know, about 2,300 milligrams per day for people that are 50 and under. But if you, you know, and that's, that's for somebody that's, you know, exercising or, um, working outside for long, long periods of time. Well, you know, archery hunting. Yeah. You're, you're, you're hiking. You're, you're basically exercising for long periods of time. And so there definitely is, you know, that sodium loss that's coming out. Um, so that's why it's kind of important to, you know, figure out and kind of discover your weight, your, you know, sweat amount. And, and, and there are different things that you can do. There are tests. And, and obviously I'm going to recommend that, you know, you guys go talk to your doctor and kind of dial this in. Now, the reason I say that 1500 milligrams, I'm not worried about it because most everything else that I eat throughout the day for snacks and lunch and this and that is fairly low in sodium. So that, that big dose of sodium is usually in those nighttime meals. And we've all seen it that, you know, a lot of the backcountry meals that are, you know, dehydrated and this and that generally have higher doses of sodium content in them. So um, let me just jump back over here real quick. Sodium helps retain water. It's all gone in your sweat throughout the day. And also sodium and potassium are needed for muscle use. Hyponatremia, Rose, exactly. I have plenty of room in my skull for swelling. <laughs> uh, Brady Miller from Go Hunt eats a specific brand of salt tablet hourly while hiking. I thought it was crazy till I looked into it. Yeah, you'll see a lot of this. And that's why, um, you know, some of these articles that I read also went on to talk about, you know, the sports drinks, because the sports drinks do have sodium and electrolytes in them, but they also contain a high amount of water as well. So you're getting that sodium dilution, even though you are drinking a sports drink. So, I mean, Joe hit it with pickle juice. You'll see a lot of times with athletes to where they are drinking sports drinks throughout, but they're still cramping. They're not getting enough. And so that pickle juice, you know, does work. Now I'm not telling anybody to fill your bladder up with pickle juice and just hike around the mountain drinking pickle juice, but you definitely do need to, you know, really find your amount for you because it is critical to each and every one. And I never realized, you know, how serious it is. And it's, it's kind of funny because you have this, you know, fine line to where you drink electrolytes and sodium contained drinks while you're hiking. And okay, so you either get just a little bit extra sodium, or maybe you don't drink enough and you get 
dehydrated. So I, I, I mean, it's, it's that fine line of staying in the middle, middle, but the way our body is. So, so let's say you figure out that, you know, you're 2,500 milligrams of sodium a day is what you need while you're exercising vigorously, you know, getting ready for season or even while you're out there hunting. So your target's 2,500, but you intake 2,700. So you went 200 milligrams over. Our body is pretty efficient because our body will actually get rid of that extra 200 milligrams. Our body's only gonna grab what we need and then basically get rid of the, get rid of the rest if we're not in a excessive sodium intake type situation. So um, now as we get older, um, I think it was Harvard Medical that talked about, you know, once you get over the age of 50, you know, then kind of the daily recommended for just somebody not exercising is 1500 milligrams. So it drops quite a bit. But again, exercising and all that actually increases the amount of sodium that you do need to take but if you are over 50 things are going to change a little bit because basically um, our body basically becomes more sensitive to sodium increases um, so we kind of have to adjust so so these are all factors that need to you know kind of calculate your age uh, your sweat rate um, you know, and even, even do some testing to find out how much sodium, you know, you're, you're putting out in your sweat. So, um, let's see, I had a few more comments, uh, electrolyte tabs, salt is more than just sodium. Like D West said, potassium is also key along with chloride, calcium all help to maintain the body fluid. Yes, you're very, you're right. And, and that's why, um, you know, a lot of these, you know, basically drinks like the ready nutrients, it, it has those electrolytes and it has those other minerals in there. And that's, that's why I'm saying it's, it's a balance with everything that you're doing, what you're drinking, what your snacks are, what your meals are. These are all things that you need to sit down and calculate and make sure that you're within that right window that you know right basically intake line for you um and like i said this this varies from person to person because you know it's it's basically the kidneys that regulate uh the sodium balance within our in our body um let's see there was something else uh in the info you found, do us bigger fat boys need less sodium than normal folks? Just wondering. Sean, it, it, it doesn't really have to do with size. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, yes, yeah, size is going to play into, but it's more so, you know, how much you're sweating and um, how your body is, is, is getting rid of the sodium, basically. So there is a lot of that. In fact, David West just hit it. If you're cramping or feeling lethargic, you're already too low. So, um, I've, I've been there. I remember several years back, um, dropped into a basin and was chasing a bull and ran out of water. And basically I made it up and out down to basically the trail and was, was on my way out. And I started cramping so bad on that trail that it was miserable about that last mile to, you know, get out. Um, I'm just thankful it happened on the trail and not actually when I was in that basin. So, uh, by myself on eight day backcountry sheep hunt, I had plenty of water, but not enough electrolytes. I had to hike out after four days, headaches, heart palpitations, no sleep, thought it was elevation sickness. And it could be, and that's, that's one thing that's interesting, bringing up elevation. Thank you. Because as you gain elevation, if you're not used to it, so you go from a lower elevation to a higher elevation, it's, it's kind of interesting because with that elevation, you know, your first day up there, I mean, you may, 
lose 1100 milligrams of sodium so um or a little bit more but as you spend time up there and you get acclimated the amount of sodium in your sweat actually drops because as you get acclimated to that elevation your your body actually you know changes so um same thing with heat you know the higher heat during the first part of the season versus the higher heat towards the tail end of the season your your intake or your need for sodium is going to be different at the first part of the season than it is going to be at the end because of the temperature change and the amount you're sweating and what you're what you're sweating out so um you're bringing up what i'll guess a majority of hunter do not take into consideration when planning an elk hunt in the mountains walking for miles so and, and yeah that's that's all part of this because like i said just these couple of conversations you know that i had with individuals and it just got me thinking going okay for those of us that live out west we have the mountains we spend more time hiking those and this and that you know how many people that are planning an elk hunt really think about this kind of stuff i mean i certainly didn't until you know a couple of years ago when i really started researching because that's one of the things i was looking at all these backpack meals and i was just like everybody else holy crap look at all the sodium that's in this i don't want that much sodium in my body this is ridiculous why can't somebody come out with a low sodium option but then i started doing research and yeah i grew up as an athlete you know playing sports and this and that and um but i mean we didn't really have discussions like this and so once i started diving into it and doing a little bit more research it was like wow i really haven't been thinking about this so you know and like i said the last couple of days kind of going through these articles and this information and then kind of going back and thinking on hunts yeah i i remember times where you know it was a little groggy and i was like okay maybe i just didn't sleep that well last night or you know this or that and it's like oh okay well maybe that wasn't the reason maybe i wasn't getting enough sodium now i'm not saying you know take a salt shaker in and pour salt on everything again it's it's you have to calculate the amount for you okay i cannot stress that enough it is going to vary from person to person there's there's not a magical formula that says if you're this age and this height and this weight you need this amount because again we all hunt differently you know the pace that we go how we hunt throughout the day the terrain that we're hunting the temperatures that we're hunting there's a lot of different variations in there that you know you you need to calculate and think and we've all seen the news stories of you know hikers that were in great shape that got lost or didn't report back and then they end up finding them and and you know you start to wonder you know what happened well i'm wondering if any of their these were because of low sodium so um you know how many times have we sat there in a summer going oh i'm just going to go out for a quick hike and you grab one small bottle of water and off you go i'll be fine with this okay well, here you are during the summer hiking to train, you know, swap trail cameras or check trail cameras or this or that. And all you have is just straight water. Well, summertime heats up, you're sweating, you're losing that. And all you're putting back in is just straight water. Kind of makes you think a little bit. Uh, let's see, Westerner also now carry electrolyte tabs, Bengay or Muscle Camp Cramp Cream. Great for hard pack outs. Freddie, how you doing, bud? um it's a selling point to have a paramedic in your hunting team got my buddies covered david that is perfect right there so uh nicholas does it go by weight so really so like i said harvard medical um is one of the sites that you know i i was just kind of going around and checking sodium and you know daily sweat and and you know can you have more basically i i just wanted i just typed in um amount of sodium for for 
vigorous exercise and you know just really started searching a lot of these but uh harvard health was one um active.com was another one active.com actually has you know really some good information on it um you know because it also talks about other ways instead of just salty foods you know you can also add um you know some extra fruits and vegetables and those are going to get your potassium magnesium and calcium that some of you guys were talking about um it also kind of gives kind of some examples um and then another one that was basically you know talking about sodium losses replacing sodium and effects of low sodium uh was just simply livestrong.com so those are just a few of the sites that i was reach you know researching on but like i said just do a google search for you know amount of sodium needed for vigorous activity or vigorous exercise something along those lines and there's article after article after article that you can read but then also do a do a search for the effects of low sodium in the body and read those too because those are kind of those are kind of eye opening i didn't even think about you know some of those things even taking place all right um charles try proven old amish formula one capful will relieve cramps in about one minute it's apple cider vinegar ginger and garlic juice won't go out west without it interesting apple cider vinegar ginger and garlic juice so th yeah there are a lot of remedies or this or that basically the purpose tonight is to kind of go beyond those quick fixes because if you get to that point where you're already camp cramping it's too late you're already there so why not take another approach and look at other option you know options throughout the day to keep your level up so uh washington elk addict i eat like i'm going to be doing a 30 mile hike year round because of my, how my body is i run hot year round 30 degrees and i'm sweating and burn calories like crazy high sodium high energy meals so yeah so that's that's a perfect example and, and washington elk addict thank you for sharing that but that's a perfect example about how everybody's body is different and so that's why with all of this you, you really need to figure out what your body needs so Tyrell Vargas, how you doing? So, uh, last year in camp, everyone was cramping. They wanted to know why I wasn't. That was my secret. Set up for no more cramps. So, Ron Thomas, yeah, Gatorade. Um, again, I'm going to encourage you guys to, to go kind of check out those sites that I talked about because they will talk about sports drinks. So, um, just some really, really good, you know, information out there. So... All right, what uh, what other questions do you guys have? I'll kind of peruse these real quick and see if any other interesting facts um, to consume 500. Okay, so basically on this one, it, it basically recommends uh, consuming 500 to 700 milligrams of sodium for every 32 ounces of fluids consumed during or after physical therapy or, or you know physical activity so sustained hiking so that's for um, every 32 ounces because basically with those ounces but again i think the caveat on that is what do you have in the fluids is it straight water do you have something with you know electrolytes and a little bit of sodium in there so so and see right here while sodium losses during exercise may seem relatively minor the consequences can actually be quite serious 
So, and again, if you combine low sodium levels with low fluid levels, yeah, that's just going to lead to a pretty, pretty dangerous situation. So we definitely want to go out. We definitely want to enjoy, but we want to definitely, you know, be safe while we're doing it as well. So, okay. Uh, so that kind of just kind of touches on the sodium you know, intake that, that I kind of wanted to talk about tonight. Like I said, I'm, I'm not in the medical field. I'm not a physician. This is just basically just stuff that, that, you know, I was researching and I, I mean, what, what really started it was I had a few individuals tell me that their target is only 600 milligrams during the day while they're out archery hunting. I don't know their style of hunting. I don't know if they're just walking to a tree stand and climbing up in the tree stand or if they're hiking 15 miles a day. It's, it's hard to say. So if their walk is only from where they park to a tree stand and they sit in the tree stand all day and then walk back, yes, that lower amount of sodium is, you know, is probably okay. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why, you know, this is the, the amount's going to vary from person to person. So Hi guys, fire questions, comments, concerns. Don't be afraid to tell me I'm off my rocker if you feel that way. So uh, University of Florida Exercise Science Department is also a good resource. So I haven't checked that one out yet, but I'll definitely go uh, check that out. University of Florida Exercise Science Department. So for anybody that wants to go read anything up on it there. Bendable Outdoors, will fast sugars like candy bars and such have an effect on your sodium level loss? I didn't really see too much um, in anything about the sugars, you know, really affecting um, too much with uh, with the sodium loss or sodium intake. Really, most everything that I was reading really talked about more the the fluid intake and the diluting of the sodium that's already in your body kind of compounding on top of the sodium loss while while exercising um you know because it's it's you know like i said we're not only just losing the sodium through sweat we're you know our our kidneys and and, and whatnot are getting rid of sodium in the urine also so definitely need to be replacing that so do you supplement protein on trips um, I don't. I, I basically kind of, you know, plan my my meals um, so that, you know, I'm getting protein. I mean, I always have jerky in my pack dur during the day. There's always, you know, protein in the dinners. Um, you know, lunch a lot of times is is kind of that combination of... A lot of times it's a plain bagel with peanut butter, three strips of bacon, and just a little bit of honey, um, and then you know some from few, few snacks. Um, I will have trail mix and whatnot. So so no, I don't I don't take any protein powders up, and and so no, I'm not really doing um, supplementing or, or adding a bunch of additional protein when I'm out there. Similar but different topic while hiking in or out have you found it better to eat specific types of foods while you're walking trail mix gummy bears etc so really the snacks that i typically have in my pack are kind of a combination of quick energy sustained energy protein um so you, you know that way if i do start feeling a little sluggish or this or that i can take something that is you know quick energy i know last year um, I got, you know, my quart bags and I did a video on what I put in those quart bags. And what I put in the quart bags is, is basically my daily intake when I'm out on the mountain. So, you know, how many calories do I need? You know, again, um, the quick energy, sustained energy, um, proteins. So, you know, kind of those, those, those good mixtures. But I also do have you know, something in that pack that is salty also. So just in case, you know, it is a pretty strenuous day and, you know, say we have a bull down and we are packing and we're sweating profusely a lot more than just 
um, an average day. So um, I always have something in there too that, you know, I have that salt. I can get that sodium replenished too. So, uh, or do you usually prefer to wait for a break and have a snack while stopped? You know, a lot of times we'll we'll snack when we stop. Um, mo you know, we, we always have access to water and, and, well, I should say fluid for hydration. Um, but in that water, I always have ready nutrients and I always mix magma. And um, basically, I, in that I have a pre-workout and branch chain amino electrolytes and so it's a combination and so that's usually always in my water when I'm out in the mountains whether I'm hiking scouting checking trail cameras or actually out on the hunt uh, but most of the time as far as eating snacks you know we're, we're really trying to take advantage of you know the elk when they're on their feet and then when the elk lay down and go to bed that's when we take a break and then we'll we'll eat and recharge so Stephen Elliott, how are you doing, mister? So, outdoor hunting addiction. Snickers bars. Snickers bars, yes. I usually generally always have um, the Halloween size Snicker bars in my pack. The, the only thing with some of those is, you know, especially during the hot of the season, the chocolate melts. And so, I've really started going trail mix more a lot over the Snickers just because still kind of get, you know, the chocolate, the raisins, the, the peanuts. And so, so the good mix is there. So, all right. Uh, keep firing questions in. So again, update, I kind of touched on it briefly. Um, I did have a group, um, two groups actually. So, uh, the first one was from Southwest Montana. Um, they just kind of started, the planning process. Um, if I can plan it right and schedule that right, I'm going to try to schedule that one right before uh, I do the Wyoming seminars in the middle of July. So maybe it'll be something like on a Thursday night in southwestern Montana and then kind of, you know, drop down and then do the Friday, Saturday in Wyoming and then come on home. The other one is. Um, outside the ears in Michigan. Um, I'm gonna do a quick little 30, 45 minute deal with those guys um, over Zoom video conferencing. So if any of you guys are on here and you are part of that group, yes, we did get that scheduled and figured out and so keep tabs on that one. So, so yeah, Southwest Montana looks like it may be getting added to the seminar uh, schedule for this summer. I, I know a couple of you guys asked about Washington and Arizona. Um, nothing as of yet. So, Ryan Mayer, how are you doing, bud? So, all right, guys, that's pretty much all I had tonight. So. Any questions, comments, concerns? You guys are kind of quiet tonight. Oh, wait a minute. Here, I guess I better scroll up on Instagram. Uh, Z Visa, hello from last year's giveaway winner. Yes, Z, I remember you won the uh, um, basically the kill kit that we give away. So, Tyrell, are you are you looking forward to September? I am always looking forward to September. Uh, any hunts in New Mexico? No, nope, not heading to New Mexico this year. So, I've had good, good luck with the cl uh, Cliff Bars uh, while training for long runs. They have three times the sodium option, which I think would work well on the mountain. Yes, actually, um, the Cliff Bars, the crunchy peanut butter, are one of my favorite things to have in the pack. So you're exactly right. They do have a good mix. Um, they just, they pack well, they don't break up. They, they hold really, really well. So, uh, rad, I take salt tablets. There are a lot of people that, that do take salt, salt tablets. So did you shoot the Triax? Um, no, I have not shot the Triax yet. So, and Boondock Patrol, do you do this every Wednesday? Yes, I do. Every Wednesday night at 7.30. So, 
Um, no, I have not shot the Triax yet. Um, actually, I do have it set up where I am going in Saturday to do the Helix Ultra versus the Traverse. Um, I will also shoot the Triax. I'm planning to shoot the PSE Evoke 35 while I'm there and also trying to get it set up too so Saturday I can run over and shoot the Obsession um, F7 and F7 XL, which then kind of just leaves um, the Expedition lineup. So. David West, do you ever get people asking for your autograph at these forums or expos? Uh, it, it's happened a couple of times, and it's, yeah, it, I don't know. I'm not used to it. It's kind of weird. It's humbling, So, but it, it, it has happened. So, uh, Robert Gonzalez, a headache can ruin the day. I always have Advil or Tylenol in my pack just in case I need it. Uh, very true. I usually have stuff like that in a small size uh, first aid kit that is always in my pack. So uh, completely off topic from an elk calling rookie, but can you imitate glunking for us? Uh, I don't know that I've heard it. So, okay. So yeah, glunking, there's a couple of ways that you can glunk. It's you can take the palm of your hand and tap it on your bugle or on your diaphragm read if you just say wit, wit, wit. So that's just a couple of ways that you can actually imitate the, the glunking. So, um, Tylenol or Advil PM. I don't take any of the Tylenol or Advil PM stuff. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty fortunate. I don't get headaches very often. Um, I, I usually just have um, uh, liquid gel caps. So is, is just usually what I have in, in camp so I can take ibuprofen. So Miss Kim, how are you doing? So baby George, you are very welcome. So, all right, guys, if you guys don't have anything else, I guess we're, uh, we're going to have to wrap this one up tonight. We're not even going to make it to the Instagram timer. This will be the first one in a while that uh, hasn't gone right up to the door of that hour mark. So, all right, last in, last call. Uh, CBS oil, CBD oil. I haven't played with it. So I, I really don't have any um, firsthand. So Ryan Mayer just helps my sleep. No, and Ryan, I have heard of people that have done that, taking Tylenol or Advil PM. Um, I did for a little while just take um, melatonin uh, chewables to camp. They're, they're gummies. Um, I also have some friends that will take uh, NyQuil just just to help but honestly um for me by the by the time at the end of the day and i i hit that rack i'm usually so tired that uh i i generally don't have too much problem with with sleeping um thanks again michael for the great info you demand chris you bet so all right guys we're gonna go ahead and wrap this one up tonight i appreciate each and every one of you thank you for tuning in a, Definitely appreciate your support. So definitely go to those websites, gather more information, kind of do the research on yourself and find out, um, you know, kind of the sodium intake that, that your body needs. So, all right, guys, next week I will have more reports on the Hoyt Helix Ultra, the Triax, the Traverse, and, you know, some of those other ones I get to play with. So, oh. One more just snuck in. Now you guys, I see this. So uh, do you have any kind of hiking routines that you follow to prepare for season? Uh, no, Mike, really, I don't. It's it's just, you know, time in the mountains, hiking, exploring, looking. I'm always, you know, kind of curious in the areas that I do hunt of always trying to find, you know, new areas to go in and check it out. Um, so a lot of times it's, you know, during those summer trips, it's, you know, just hiking trips. Um, here in Boise, we are pretty lucky because we are right next to the foothills. There are a lot of trails out there that, you know, I will do some pack hikes out on there. 
Um, but really, I focus more uh, three, four times a week of doing HIT training, high high intensity interval training, and Tabata. Those are, are primarily what I focus on to kind of get ready for season. Uh, Anthony, how do I get on the list for seminar at Southern Oregon Archery? Um, Anthony, if you want, just go ahead and give the shop a call. Um, I, in fact, I, I really need to reach out to them, out to them to see really, you know, what the, what the plan is and really, um, what, uh, how big their facility is. I have, I have absolutely no deal. So Mike, I'm in Nampa. So do you use the Table Rock Trail or something like that? Yeah, Table Rock, the Tram Trail. And in fact, for those of you that live in the Boise area, I don't know if you know it, but there is a new website. It's boisetrails.com. And it has all of the trails on the Boise front, on the foothills. And it shows them all linked together. It shows difficulty. It shows how much elevation there is involved in that trail, how you can link trails together. Uh, to get to different places. So for those of you in the Boise area, it's a great tool to use. So definitely recommend it. So, all right, guys, appreciate each and every, every one of you. As always, keep calling, keep practicing. Most importantly, have fun. And we'll see you guys next week on the next episode of Wapiti Wednesday Q&A. Have a great week, everybody.